youth tear upon the core of blasphemy follow your prophet and on evil make a victory let our righteousness be a role model to our children making new generations of believers decently upbringing with parents as an example as gems we shape them fearing only Bismillah, assalamu alaikum, peace. Welcome to Closing the Gap. I'm your host, Omar Dunlap. We have with us Sheikh Yusuf Estes. Welcome. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Sheikh, we were talking about in a previous episode about uh, the gap between dating, mating, and waiting. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we did. I remember that. Yeah. Right. And uh, we, we decided that, that maybe we should take it a little further because this is a big, big topic uh, right. and talk about, you know, people living together. I mean, not being married, they're dating or maybe they're engaged or something like that, but they, they live together, you know, just as though they were husband or wife versus uh, people who are married, who get married like a cold start marriage, we'll call it. Cold start, okay. Right. Yeah, cold you know, start. just like, you know, how, how some people do it in Islam. They get to know each other, you know, just enough to see if, if, if the glove fits, and if it works, we get married, you know? So this is our topic. This is our topic. <laughs> all right, well, okay, let's look at that. Uh, first of all, as we discussed in that previous program, this type of thing has been going around for a long time. This mm -hmm. is not something people thought up in the last 20 years is not something brand new. Ever since the time of Adam and Eve, there have been conflicts even over marriage, and there's been a situation where those who probably shouldn't have been together for whatever reason, maybe too close to his relatives, something like that, or you know, their uh, families are against each other. The story of Romeo and Juliet hmm. depicts this very situation with uh, Shakespeare's story about the two youth. It's, by the way, these are young teens. I don't. Did you know the story of Romeo and Juliet? Yeah, I read it in high school. Did you? Yeah. No. Well, these are young teens from mm. the Capulets and the Montagues, mm. and these two are basically at war with each other, like a feud between these two families. Mm. And it's all about this name business, and that's why the expression uh, "rose by any other name would smell as sweet." This <laughs> is taken from that, right. and. Uh, there, there are a number of interesting things in this story, the soliloquy that we hear between uh, them and this uh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? And it's <laughs> supposed to be such a romantic story, but in reality, if we look at it and compare it to Islam, we would have to say, this is not a good thing. Right. Not at all. Because, first of all, they're disobeying their parents. Mm. And in Islam, it's very important to obey the parents. Mm. This is not an option. This is something as a part of our belief system, actually. When you uh, claim to believe in Allah, then the very next thing after that is the treatment of people, and the first of the people to have rights on you, in fact, are going to be your own parents. Right. And between them, even, we know it's your mother. Mm. And the mothers are the ones who are the most outspoken about marriage, who you will marry, <laughs> who you won't marry, and so on. So when you have a family like the Capulets and the Montagues in the story of Romeo and Juliet, who are so opposed to each other, and nothing is going to satisfy these parents of coming together even to talk with each other, much less consider such a preposterous idea of having our youth intermarry here. It's just not going to work. They weren't allowed to even see or talk to each other. That was clear from the story, if you remember. Right. And now all of a sudden they're meeting in a clandestine relationship. Mm being intimate with each other, lovers, as mm. they used to call them. You know, it was very clear what he was saying that they were doing without benefit of clergy, mm. without being married. And here they're doing this thing, and then one of them fakes their death. Right. And is so convincing that the other one believes, oh, my God, my lover is dead, and takes their own life. And then when the other one comes to and says, oh, my lover has killed themselves, I'll kill myself. And this is called a love story. Mm. It's a double suicide. Right. A double suicide. Now, according to Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, whoever takes their own life will go to hell forever. Right. So 
how do you say that this is a love story? <laughs> you got a double suicide. You got family feuds going on. It gets even worse after that, obviously, <laughs> and they're all going to hell. Mm. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Not a lot <laughs> what of love. The heck? <laughs> right. I, don't, I don't get it. <laughs> so it's not acceptable in Islam to, to go against your family's wishes like this and destroy families and and ultimately it's not going to work out. Mm. It won't. Almost none of those affairs, as they call them, work out. Right. And one of the things we have a tendency to do is to give a new name for something so it's more palatable, mm. easier to deal with the subject. Right. We don't want to say for instance, that they are fornicating. Oh, no, no, no. They're having a love affair. Right. Ah. <laughs> uh, we don't want to say they're committing adultery. No, we want to say that they're having an affair outside of wedlock. <laughs> what are you talking about here? Right. Well, <laughs> say what you mean. Right. Be clear, be straight. Mm -hmm. And that's better for you. Right. When a person doesn't deal with truth, no matter what the subject is, Later, that will come back and they'll have to deal with it. And it causes some very serious problems mm. down the road. You right. have to deal with the reality and the truth. Right. So I think we've outlined, I think, a little bit of the situation of what people are running into. By telling this story, you can now relate that to real issues that are going on. The children want to go out and do their thing. Now, in some cases today, the parents don't even have a problem with it. Mm, yeah. It's not uncommon. Parents say, well, go ahead, you know, I, when I was young, you know, ha, ha, ha. Mm. But now, especially rights, Islam is dealing with the subject of haq, mm. rights, giving rights to everybody. And how can you give rights to parents, for instance, who have expected you to be married, to have children, grandchildren for them, of course, and you're not giving them their rights? Well, what about the girl? Is she getting her rights? And the mm. boy, is he getting his rights? Right. The boy wants to have children. The girl, she would like maybe to have children. But what happens in the situation? The girl becomes pregnant. She's going to have a child. And she says, well, I don't want to be with this guy. That was just for fun. Mm. Now what happens? She's got a problem now. Suppose the boy did this. I don't want to be married to you. I'm sorry. You got pregnant. That's your fault. Right. It's her fault. <laughs> I don't think so. Right. Oh, huh. I, what I remember about biology, <laughs> he had a lot to do with this. <laughs> so now what about the child? Does the child get any rights out of this? Mm. Now, in our country, as you know, there have been a lot of court issues over these things. Right. We've had to have laws passed. Various states have different laws regarding children born out of wedlock. Mm. Whose name do they get? Right. The mother's last name or the father's last name? Mm -hmm. And then what about blood types? And let's match that up to prove this is the father. And it turns out, oh, even though they live together, he wasn't the father anyway. Mm -hmm. This is another guy that comes into the picture. Right. And they have shows like Jerry Springer where they bring out people and do blood tests and find out, oh, guess what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's not his son after all. What? Right. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, <laughs> that's not your mother either. Right. And that's not her father either. <laughs> it becomes crazy. Right. So where do the people get the rights? Mm -hmm. Now, rights of inheritance are a part of Islam mentioned even in the Qur'an itself. And how can we give rights of inheritance to people who don't even know who their parents are? Right. And that's long before we talk about some of the basic rights. Basic rights of having a father help you to go through some of the things. You and I grew up and wanted to have our father with us. Take you fishing, take you camping, feel like, you know, that's my dad. Right. Or the mom, you know, this is my mom. She's helping me with this and that, brushing my hair and teaching me this and, and the little things along the way. How do you get that? Mm -hmm. So it seems like uh, what we're saying is that the, 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 the people who aren't getting married, who are having the, the same sort of marriage relationship but without actually committing to each other in a marriage, it seems like it's causing a lot of pain. It's causing a lot of, you know, issues. 
the argument from the other side would be, yes, but how would we be able to live with a person we don't even know them? You just want me to throw myself out there into the wilderness, basically right. throw myself into the ocean, and I don't even know how to swim. Mm. Uh, why shouldn't I be allowed to go out and get some experience, get some background here, and uh, check out a few guys or check out a few girls, whatever, and then after living with them for a while, okay, this didn't work out, but I could maybe go back to that one. Mm. And, well, they're in a new relationship. I'll go break them up. And, you know, <laughs> This is the kind of thing that you see in these soap operas. Right. It's a constant, ongoing thing with these stories of these people in their situations. And the more complicated it is, the more people watch the show. Mm. Why? It's because they're thinking, wow, that's even more complicated than my life. <laughs> you know? right. The solution. The solution comes through understanding people's rights. If you don't understand this subject of rights, you will always have problems. Mm. And Islam is telling us the rights in the proper priority, pecking order, if you will, starting with Allah. To believe that Allah has the ultimate right of worship, and that means you're going to follow what he's ordered you to do. Mm. And in Islam, it is an order that you must get married before there is intimacy. There cannot be intercourse without marriage. Finished. Loss. And that's because it'll cause all of these problems that we're mentioning. I mean, it's not just an arbitrary rule that one, we're not saying that Islam wants to curtail fun, are we? Well, we're saying in this case, to be crystal clear, mm. it doesn't matter if you understand the why or not. Mm. This is a command in the Quran for believers. Yayuladina mm. Amanu. When we hear this, Allah is talking to those who have come to the belief. They've come to the faith. They've put their trust in Almighty Allah to the extent He is their God. Mm. Not just a king. He's the God. And if He says it, you're going to do it. If He says, don't do it, you're not going to do it. Mm. He told Adam and Eve, don't eat from the fruit of this tree. And he didn't tell them why. And until this day, nobody knows the why. Mm. Except that it is a what. Allah. It's a what. A test. Mm. It was a trial for them to show them something. Allah knew they would eat it. And then he showed them how to repent. Mm. We're not saying that a person who commits fornication will automatically go to hell forever. Mm. We didn't say that. Right. But we're saying it's something very bad. It is a major sin. And it is something that could put somebody in hell unless they make tawbah or repent for it. MashaAllah. Well, uh, Sheikh, we're going to take a, a short break and we'll be right back, inshallah. So don't go anywhere. You're watching Closing the Gap. Fearing only Allah, devoting our lives for Him. Ask Hoda. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to a new edition of Ask Huda. I have two questions. Please go ahead. You can read it in Arabic and you can also understand the meaning in your own language. The different tafsir and interpretation of the meanings of the Quran uh, are available in almost every language that exists on earth by the grace of Allah. The water of Zamzam is for whatever intention you drink it with. Salih from Egypt. His father has the way and he asked about how can he help him? Very good question. Can we give a zakat to any of the Dawah centers? The ibadah or the act of worship is a part of the unity of worship. It has to be paid to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in accordance with the guidance of His Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Bismillah. Welcome back to Closing the Gap. I'm your host, Omar Dunlap. We have with us, of course, Sheikh Yusuf Estes. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam, Omar. Um, Sheikh, just before the break, we were talking about the, the gap between or the difference between uh, the cold start marriage, as we were calling it, and uh, 
you know, living together before marriage and all of the, you know, having basically a, a marital relationship without actually committing to the other person. I was wondering if we could sort of get Islam's take on this. What does Islam have to say about this whole issue? There are a number of verses in the Quran dealing with the subject of marriage and what will happen to a person who commits fornication without marriage. Mm. Now there is a distinction in Islam between fornication and adultery. Fornication, by definition that we're talking about here, to commit zina, is when a man uh, or woman have intercourse, consummate this, uh, but they're not married. Mm. Adultery, on the other hand, this is a case where a married person is having this intercourse outside of their marriage. In other words, this lady is married to this man, but she's doing this with this other man. Or this man is married to this lady, but he has this uh, intercourse with this other lady. Mm. And I chose to say intercourse instead of saying affair or trying to make it sound pretty. It isn't. Right. It's a very ugly, filthy thing. Mm. It needs to be dealt with from that point of view. It is ugly and it is filthy. It is done in secret. It is done against even the society and the norm. And it is not a benefit to anyone. This is personal gratification, it is lust, it is based on desire, and it is from a shaitan, mm. for sure. The shaitan, he wants you to commit these acts of fashawa, this evilness. This is a really a bad thing, right. no matter how you look at it. Mm. So Allah tells us to don't even get close to that. That's why we talked before about pornography. We touched on that subject. Stay away from these things because it will lead to that. Right. Get away from anything that will bring you closer to that. Until somebody's of the age and the ability to marry, have you know what's required financially, whatever, then they're taught in Islam to fast. Mm. To fast, because fasting reduces these urges. And to continue with their remembrance of Allah, to read the Quran and to pray more to Allah. And... Avoid these contacts. You notice that one of the things about men and women, we try to separate them in Islam. And one of the reasons is because this getting too close physically can cause a problem. Right. People start thinking, people accidentally touching one thing leading to another, and the next thing you know, married or unmarried, they're right. into these situations which are very evil. Mm. And uh, they wind up going really astray more and more. It gets, it gets worse. It never gets better. Right. It always gets worse. So Islam is showing us that from the beginning that we need to teach our children what sex is about. Mm. So they don't have this thing. I mean, of course, if you don't have any clue, now all of a sudden you wake up one day and you're saying, well, I'm really interested in uh, <laughs> the opposite sex here. Right. Well, what do I do about that? Right. Well, no, Islam is telling us from the beginning. We have hadith and Quran itself explaining about the sexes, telling us from the standpoint, you want us to talk about birds and bees? Huh, we've got birds and bees mentioned in Quran, <laughs> right. as well as ants and other uh, <laughs> animals and human beings. Everything is all right there. You, your biology 101, look to the Quran. You've right. got, you're covered. And you can see what is a, a proper relationship, and why? Mm. Why do you get married? Well, it's not just about your urges and your desires, although that's a fulfillment. Mm. But at the same time, getting married has a reason, because you want children. That's mm. the main purpose behind marriage, according to Islam, is to have children, have children, have children. And rights, to give the parents rights to be with their children, to raise their children. Mm. Yet your child, why shouldn't you have the right to raise it? And grandparents' rights are already there in Islam. We didn't have to have a, a, a proposition passed and voting on it in the courts in the United States and go to the Supreme Court over it. No, it's right there in Islam. It's clear. Right. Grandparents have rights. But what about this? Children's rights, all like it's a new issue. No, no, this has been in Islam right along, talking even about orphans' rights. Mm. There's a surah in the Quran called An-Nisa, mm. the women, right. filled with giving rights from the very beginning of the chapter of An-Nisa, when Allah is telling us, O oh, you who believe, 
have taqwa for Allah. And it tells us he's the one who created you guys. Have this God-fearing consciousness. Right. Know? He's the one who created you guys from a single one and from Adam, the mate, and from them came many men and many women. Mm. And then by the one you demand your mutual rights, you're swearing by a law, you want to, your, your rights, I want my rights. It's telling you right there. And then look what the next verse is talking about. Orphan girls, mm. giving orphan girls their rights. Don't marry these girls with this idea that you're going to take their wealth away from them. Because people used to do that. Right. They would take, okay, if a girl's two or three years old, her father dies, a guy comes along. They did this in the Arab desert. I marry this girl. Anybody want to stop me? <laughs> no. All right. Well, it's not about sex. It was about money. Right. It was about wealth to take all of the, uh, the, her father's inheritance, property, right. the inheritance. Yeah. So that's why in the third verse we find it says, Marry other women of your choice. Well, you have to go back and read the other verse. Then. What other women are you talking about? And those who want to take Islam out of context, they don't read this part, and they're sure not going to read the verse before. They just say, marry your women, two, three, four. And then they stop. Right. They say, or they'll just skip it and say, marry your wives up to four. <laughs> they, they totally twist the meaning here. Right. The people back then didn't have any limits. Hmm. They would marry any woman and take whatever she had, and there was no limit on the number. There was no limit on how they could treat them. They could beat them. They could hurt them. They could oh, sell them. They could trade them. So women had no rights. Mm. But now they had limits. You could marry two, three, or four, but that's it, maximum. And they're like, what? <laughs> the companions of Muhammad had to divorce wives. Mm, they didn't right. go out and marry. They had a divorce. And then it gave you something else. They don't ever tell you this. If you can't treat them fairly, you can only have one. Mm, subhanallah. Now, uh, alhamdulillah, I'm married to a lady from Texas, and she informed me from the beginning, one from Texas equals four from anywhere else. <laughs> so alhamdulillah, I don't have any problems with this subject. But <laughs> <laughs> that I wanted to demonstrate a little story to you and let you understand when you see what Islam is teaching you, to bring together a man and a woman for this purpose is a beautiful thing. Mm. And you don't have to live together. You don't have to know each other right. to get married. But you do need to know the principles behind what the person wants, what they're about. My wife and I had the chance to meet each other and talk. I had, my, I had two little daughters at the time. We talked for maybe a half hour, hour, and a, another meeting for another you know, a half hour or so, and that was it. We decided from that that we would like to talk this over as a marriage situation. She came to my home, my father was there, my daughters were there, and while we were talking, my little daughter, she went up to her and she said, are you gonna be my mommy? <laughs> SubhanAllah. She, my wife says, well, he hasn't asked me yet. My daughter came running over to me, ask her, daddy, <laughs> and now I was embarrassed. My dad's laughing, you know, <laughs> and I said, uh -uh, well, uh, uh, do you? She said, what? I said, I mean, you know, do you want to? She said, want to what? I said, you know, get married. And my dad's over there. <laughs> he knows I'm embarrassed, you know. Yeah. And because, I, you know, from our culture, uh, Western culture, I, I didn't know really what to do. Mm. She said, I don't know if it's in Islam or not, but I would like it if you would put your knee on the ground <laughs> and ask me, you know, really ask me to marry you. SubhanAllah. I went, whoa. <laughs> Now my dad can hardly contain himself. <laughs> and I, I did it. I put my knee on the ground. I looked up at her and I said, uh, will you marry me? Whoop. <laughs> and she didn't answer. Oh, subhanAllah. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, my God. I felt like a big lollipop, you know, mm. a big sucker. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I sat back down for a second in the chair and I'm thinking, oh, man. Oh, come on. Then she goes like this. Well, I may be crazy, <laughs> but yes, <laughs> we'll get married. And I was so excited, mm. you know, because she accepted and because it seemed right. But then right at that moment, the telephone rang. Mm. I went to the phone, I picked it up, and the brother told me, my wife is ready for, to go meet this lady for you and introduce you to her so you guys could meet and talk about marriage. Because we, we had been talking about this for months, mm. that I wanted to meet her. But she and I had met by accident mm. anyway mm. on Sunday. 
And here it is now Thursday. It was in November. I remember that. And <laughs> subhanAllah, I told him, no, I met her already. He said, what? <laughs> How? I said, was well, the store where she worked, we ran into her. He said, oh, my God. Well, I said, she's actually here right now. No, no, he said, I'm talking about the lady, the Muslim lady from Texas. I said, yes, <laughs> she's here. Oh, I don't know about that. I said, we've already talked about, we've agreed to get married. What? <laughs> I said, yes. <laughs> and he said, we'll be right over. I said, you'll be what? <laughs> what do you mean you'll be right over? Because I'm thinking, you know, maybe this is November, maybe next uh, summer we can work some <laughs> things out. Right. They came over from the masjid, these brothers from the masjid, and uh, one of them represented her and explained to her her rights. I didn't know she had rights like this. Mm. He said, you need to step to the other room, and then you have a chance to read a written proposition from him. He has to write up something that he wants to marry you, and this is what he's going to do. Mm. And this is what he's offering you. You have to put it in writing. I said, I do? Mm. Um, I've been married before. I didn't have to do all that. This is Islam. Right. She has rights. Mm. And that's our point, isn't it? Right. She has rights. So then he asked her three times, are you sure you want to accept what he's offering and be his wife? And each time she acknowledged yes. And then he comes back and has her signature on the paper. He said, no, you guys are married. I said, that's it. That's it. Mm. It's a contractual agreement in front of God and witnesses and you have chosen to marry her and she's accepted and you're oh. legitimate to be married to each other therefore you're now married <laughs> Alhamdulillah subhanAllah it's as simple as that mm. well Sheikh unfortunately uh, we're going to have to end it there that's all the time we have for today I would like to thank you for being with us and for our viewers uh, don't forget to watch us next time inshallah until then I'm Omar Dunlap wishing you peace Assalamu alaikum. Mm. O oh, youth, tear upon the core of blasphemy Follow your prophet and on evil make a victory Let our righteousness be a role model to our children Making new generations of believers decently upbringing With parents as an example As gems we shape them Fearing only Allah Devoting our lives for Him there, there are a number of interesting things in this story, the soliloquy that we hear between them and this uh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? And it's supposed to be such a romantic story, but in reality, if we look at it and compare it to Islam, we would have to say, this is not a good thing. Right. Not at all. Because, first of all, they're disobeying their parents. Mm. And in Islam, it's very important to obey the parents. Mm. This is not an option. This is something as a part of our belief system, actually. When you... Uh, claim to believe in the law, then the very next thing after that is the treatment of people and the first of the people to have rights on you. Oh, youth, tear upon the core of blasphemy. Follow your prophet and on evil make a victory. Let our righteousness be a role model to our children, making new generations of believers decently upbringing. With parents as an example, as gems we shape them, fearing only Allah, devoting our lives for Him. Bismillah. Probably shouldn't have been together for whatever reason, maybe too close to his relatives, something like that, or, you know, their uh, families are against each other. The story of Romeo and Juliet hmm. depicts this very situation with uh, Shakespeare's story about the two youth. These, by the way, these are young teens. I don't. Did you know the story of Romeo and Juliet? Yeah, I read it in high school. Did you? Yeah. yeah. Well, these are young teens from hmm. the Capulets and the Montagues, hmm. and these two are basically at war with each other, like a feud between these two families. Hmm. And it's all about this name business, and that's why the expression... A uh, rose by any other name would smell as sweet. This is taken from that. Right. And it, like a cold start marriage, we'll call it. Cold start, okay. Yeah, yeah you know, start. just like, you know, how, how some people do it in Islam. They get to know each other, you know, just enough to see if, if, if the glove fits, 
And if it works, we get married, you know? So this is our topic. This is our topic. <laughs> all right. Well, okay, let's look at that. Uh, first of all, as we discussed in that previous program, this type of thing has been going around for a long time. This mm -hmm. is not something people thought up in the last 20 years. It's not something brand new. Ever since the time of Adam and Eve, there have been conflicts even over marriage, and there's been a situation where those who... Assalamu alaikum, peace. Welcome to Closing the Gap. I'm your host, Omar Dunlap. We have with us Sheikh Yusuf Estes. Welcome. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Sheikh, we were talking about in a previous episode about uh, the gap between dating mating and waiting <laughs> <laughs> yes we did i remember that here right and uh we we decided that, that maybe we should take it a little further because this is a big big topic uh, right. and talk about you know people living together i mean not being married they're dating or maybe they're engaged or something like that but they they live together you know just as though they were husband or wife versus uh people who are married who get married